Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about horizontal asymptotes and limits to infinity. I already have a video on this topic, but it was more from a pre-calculus lens where the examples were very straightforward and stuck to exactly what the three rules are. I'm going to discuss those three rules in review just so we have an idea of how to find these limits to infinity. If you want a more detailed description, you can go back and check out that first video on horizontal asymptotes and limits to infinity. This video, after we do the review, will then focus more on some tougher limits to infinity and we'll even touch upon the squeeze theorem. First, given a function that can be written as a quotient of two polynomials, meaning that function f of x can be written as p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are both polynomials. If the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, so q of x has a higher degree, say this is an x cubed on the bottom and p of x is just an x on the top, if the degree of the denominator is greater, then the limit of that function would be zero, and there would be a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. If, given a function that can be written as a quotient of polynomials, so again, I have f of x is p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomials. If the degree of the denominator is less than the degree of the numerator, so say my function in the numerator is an x cubed, and then the expression in the denominator is just an x squared. If the numerator is greater than the limit is positive or negative infinity, depending on what's going on with the signs in the numerator and the denominator. If that's the case, then there is no horizontal asymptote. The third case, given a function f of x is p of x over q of x, if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the limit as x approaches infinity of this function is the quotient of the leading coefficients. If the quotient of the leading coefficients was, say, a over b, then I would have a horizontal asymptote at y equals a over b. Again, this was a pretty quick review of horizontal asymptotes and limits to infinity. If this was too quick for you, you're going to need to go back and check out that first video on horizontal asymptotes and limits to infinity that I will link to in the description. Now that we've reviewed our general rules for finding limits to infinity and identifying those horizontal asymptotes based on those limits, let's look at a couple of examples where these examples are a little bit tougher than the ones in that first video. These are more problems that you would see in a calculus level course. Part A, identify the horizontal asymptote of f of x equals 2 plus 1 over x. I'm first going to look at the limit as x approaches infinity of this function. So I have the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 plus 1 over x. Since I have two complete and separate terms here, I can look at the limit of each piece individually. So according to my limit laws, I can split this up as the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 plus the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. I know this first limit is just 2. And then for the second one, as x approaches infinity, the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. So this limit is going to approach 0, which means that the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 plus 1 over x is just 2. If the limit as x approaches infinity is 2, that means the horizontal asymptote of this function f of x is the line y equals 2. Part b. Identify the horizontal asymptotes of f of x equals x over the square root of x squared plus 1. Since I'm looking for a horizontal asymptote, I'm first going to look at the limit as x approaches infinity of this function. Now, when I look to compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator, the square root here makes things a little bit tricky. So what I want to do is figure out what this denominator is after I've taken the square root. Now, the plus 1 doesn't really matter so much because it's such a small and insignificant number. So I'm really focusing on just the square root of x squared in the denominator. So I'm going to look at this as the limit as x approaches infinity of x over the square root of x squared. I know that the square root of x squared is just x. So I can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches infinity of x over x, which is just 1. Since the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is 1, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. I also need to check the limit as x approaches negative infinity. I have the same thing, x over the square root of x squared plus 1. And the same idea happens. I can kind of just ignore this plus 1, and I end up with the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x over x. 
However, I'm taking to account here the signs. Since x is approaching negative infinity, the numerator is going to be negative here. And if I look back at the beginning of this function, I was squaring a negative number, which means that no matter what, this denominator is going to be positive. So since I have negative over positive, this is going to be negative 1, which means I also have a horizontal asymptote in this case at y equals negative 1. In that first example, I didn't need to check the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the 2 plus 1 over x, because even when x was approaching negative infinity, this first piece, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2, was still 2, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x was still 0. So I still got 2 when I was looking at the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So in that first case, A, my only horizontal asymptote was y equals 2. However, here, since I get two different answers for x approaching positive infinity and x approaching negative infinity, I have two separate horizontal asymptotes, y equals 1 and y equals negative 1. Part C, find the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x over x. In order to find this limit, we're going to use something called the squeeze theorem. The squeeze theorem says if h of x is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to g of x, for all x in an open interval containing c, except possibly at c itself, and if the limit as x approaches c of h of x equals l equals the limit as x approaches c of g of x, then the limit as x approaches c of f of x exists and is equal to l. That's a lot of words. Essentially what they're saying is if you can use the function that you have and kind of sandwich it between two other functions that you know or even two numbers, and then you can evaluate the limit of each of those functions on the outer pieces of this inequality, then the limit of f of x has to be what these two limits are equal to. Let's look at this example to see how we can apply the squeeze theorem. I'm first going to consider just the function sine x. I know that the function sine of x has a range of negative 1 to 1, right? Sine x oscillates between negative 1 and positive 1. If I then take each piece of this inequality and divide them by x, Whatever I do to one piece, I can do to the other piece. This inequality is now still true. Negative 1 over x is less than or equal to sine x over x is less than or equal to 1 over x. Now what I'm going to do is take the limit of each piece of this inequality. So I'm going to look at the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 1 over x, which is going to be less than or equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x over x which is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. So on the left side, I have the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 1 over x. x is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This number is going to approach 0. So I have 0 is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x over x less than or equal to, if I evaluate this limit, the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x is also going to be 0. So that means that this limit is between 0 and 0. That means that limit is just 0. So I've effectively squeezed the function sine x over x between 0 and 0. So the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x over x is equal to 0, d. Find the limit as x approaches infinity of 5x plus sine x over x. This problem is kind of a combination of part A and part C. So what I'm first going to do is split this fraction into two pieces. So I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as x approaches infinity of 5x over x plus the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x over x. On this first piece, I see that my x's cancel. So I'm left with the limit as x approaches infinity of 5. That's going to be equal to 5. On the right side, the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x over x, we just found in part C by using the squeeze theorem that this limit is equal to 0. So that means the limit of this function to begin with was 5. That's it for finding limits to infinity and horizontal asymptotes from a calculus perspective. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you are not one of my students and would like a copy of this worksheet, please send an email and I will leave the email in the description below as well. Hope you have a great day.